Now, Rishi Sunak has joined his American counterparts, Joe Biden, in calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. The Prime Minister said this morning that the situation in the region is increasingly intolerable, and he said he is urging Israel to change its tack. Uh, these remarks follow President Biden's claims that Israel is making a mistake in how it is handling the war. Uh, we're still joined by, uh, appropriately, Talk TV's international editor, Isabel Oakshot. Uh, now, Jake Wallace-Simon, the editor of the Jewish Chronicle, has got a really uh, disturbing piece in the new edition of The Spectator magazine, in which he says he's obviously a big supporter of Israel, uh, as am I, as am uh, Alex, and I think you are too. We stand with Israel. We still remember of what happened on October the 7th. But uh, Jake says that uh, ever since Biden and now Sunak and Cameron started pulling the rug from underneath Netanyahu's uh, feet, saying, you know, you've got to carry on like this, you've got to uh, look at the humanitarian crisis, all that. He said, basically, we've gone from winning the war. He said, now Hamas is winning the war. Israel has all but lost because international support has gone. At one point, about a month ago, apparently there were 100,000 IDF troops in Gaza. Guess how many are left? 1,000. Mm. Uh, wow. Israel's losing. Wow. Um, look, I think that that uh, accidental hitting of the aid convoy, uh, whenever it was 10 days ago, yeah. was a real watershed yes, moment. It, mm. um, it is very hard if you are on our side of the argument, um, if you are wanting to stand with Israel for all the obvious reasons, you know, mm. let's remember who started this conflict. Yeah. But it has become increasingly difficult uh, to keep on voicing the defence for some of the dreadful scenes that we are seeing. And they're very real scenes. You know, you don't have to say that these are the product of a Hamas spin operation. I mean, there really are people suffering very, very yeah, grievously in Gaza. And I'm afraid that Israel has lost the room. Um, worse than that, they are now facing a, a diplomatic crisis because the unity that there was around the West uh, on the side of Israel ha is very rapidly disintegrating. And, you know, it seems to me that there's not a great deal left of Gaza anyway. Um, but I don't know how Netanyahu gets his way out of this. You know, he has got a domestic audience to worry about. Uh, he has somehow managed to hold on to his position on the basis that he is doing what it takes to ensure this can never, ever happen again. Unfortunately, that objective is essentially unachievable mm. when you're trying to kill an idea. And there are always going to be Hamas sympathising operatives somewhere. Yeah, I mean, this is the difficulty. I mean, much like everything else in life, it's become massively siloed. And the media, again, has played a part, I think, in a lot of this. I was listening to the radio this morning and listening to a number of IDF soldiers being interviewed. And one guy was like, well, look, I'm a reservist. I'm just a student. They said I've got to call up and defend my country. Never thought this, I'd have to do this before October the 7th. Always believed in a two-state solution. And he said, I've been going around trying to defend citizens in Gaza. That's been my job with Hamas snipers everywhere. If I die, I'm going to be remembered as someone genocidal. Yeah. And I think this is the problem. I think no other war, we, we're not looking at ghoulish scenes happening in Ukraine all the time. Far from it. People have just oh, well, forgotten about this, but this has become the latest political football. But where do we go from here? Where do we as the West go from here? What are the next steps? Because as you said, you're not going to defeat the idea. If anything, there are going to be far more people in Gaza now who viscerally detest Israel because their houses have been razed to the ground and rubbleized. Their family members have been killed um, and, and the idea of a two-state solution now is probably further away than it's ever been. I'm sure that's absolutely right and I mean you know if I was sitting here and I had an answer to this horrendous long-term conundrum I wouldn't be working as a commentator here I'd be you know at the top table in these diplomatic negotiations if they ever indeed happen. Um, look I, I don't know I don't know where we go I'm just gonna be honest I don't know. Uh, the, um, Do you? Uh, <laughs> Nobody does. Well, one one, one uh, Israeli politician said in terms of the mission to destroy Hamas and where they're at now, he said you can't put out a fire by putting out 80% of it. That, uh, and and that there, was always the case. Therein the lies start. the problem. Yeah. Uh, shall we have a little uh, listen and watch of uh, Joe Biden uh, talking about uh, Netanyahu making a mistake? Let's watch this. What I will tell you is I think what he's doing is a mistake. I don't agree with his approach. I think it's outrageous that those four, three vehicles were hit by drones and taken out on a highway where it wasn't like it was along the shore. 
wasn't like there was a convoy moving here, etc. I think with this, I mean, let's remember this did come down to, like you said, that inflection point was that aid convoy being targeted. Um, and it's sort of turning around saying, we found the people who did this. We think there was a, you know, misreporting in intelligence. They hadn't followed protocols. It was dreadful and, and this is being dealt with. But I think it, it does make us call into question the operation over time of supranational organisations like the UN who have allowed themselves to be infiltrated by Hamas. Yeah. Money that's been sent into that region, which has been misappropriated and used to build these yep. tunnels yep. and constantly this sort of confusion with are they terrorists or are they freedom fighters? Yep. In many respects, the supranational community has enabled us to get to a Couldn't situation where more. the truth is yeah. murky yeah. and it's created this so situation where those, those three I'm vehicles I'm really were glad stuck. that you've brought up the role of the UN here and the UN so-called Works and Relief Agency, UNRWA. Um, Trump, when he was president, was very, very adamant that we should not, I would say we, that's the US, the UK, by the way, we send multi-millions to UNRWA as well. Um, they are effectively pr have provided the infrastructure uh, in Gaza for a very long time. Mm. You know, Hamas doesn't run a, a government, you know, it, it, it may provide leadership of some sort, but it is the UN, UN money, that has effectively provided the machinery of government that has enabled Hamas to keep being there, to keep being in power. They're like the civil service. And they are, I'm afraid they have been demonstrated to be riddled with sympathizers mm -hmm. to terrorist organizations. And Trump was right on this. Mm. Trump took away the money. Uh, unfortunately, Biden gave it back again. Uh, and now everyone's surprised that we have an even bigger problem than we would have if people had stuck with the Trump policy. Yeah, well, Israel is in trouble now because uh, we let them down. We just stopped being their allies, uh, proper allies, and so did America. Because, of course, it's all the woke brigade on the back, on the shoulders of Biden, and uh, soon that will suffer the children. The, 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 the humanitarian crisis, the killing there, is awful. Uh, but Israel has got a mission, and I think it's a shame that the West has forgotten that. Uh, and uh, because of the West attitude, because of America and Britain's attitude, I'm I'm afraid uh, Israel is in trouble and may not yeah. succeed in uh, in any way destroying Hamas. So we're back to square one. They'll do an October the 7th again. Isn't that well, great? We will. better move on.